Hi there, X-Ray Ed with you once again for another exciting episode of X-Ray Education. Now today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. I sometimes give talks to prospective students. I have my traveling show behind me here. Um, people come up to us at uh, you know like um, trade shows, job fairs, um, sometimes we go out to high schools. Um, I've actually even taken my stuff to middle schools to try to tell people a little bit about the profession of radiologic technology. Um, but today uh, I wanted to say a few things to prospective students. If you're thinking about joining an x-ray program somewhere, you've been thinking about it, you're not 100% sure, um, trust me. Radiography is a really good profession. I've been doing the education thing now for about 19 years and I am fixing to head back over to the hospital. I'm going to be working there, um, you know, not necessarily every day, but, uh, you know, pretty often um, because I really miss it. You know, the patient interactions are a big part of radiography. If you enjoy working with people and you enjoy helping people or if you feel a call, to, to help people that are less fortunate, then this is going to be great for you. Um, but a few words of advice. When you get into your radiography program, regardless of which program it is, listen up to your instructors. Your instructors in the classroom and your clinical instructors. They've got a lot of experience. They've probably trained you know, 10 or 20 groups of students prior to you showing up. So they have an idea of what things are supposed to look like, you know, how things are supposed to go. So listen to them. Um, don't talk back, especially not in clinic. If you're a clinical instructor or just any technologist says, okay, well, we're going to go into this room and here's how we're going to shoot this x-ray. Um, you know, don't, don't ask a bunch of questions about, well, wouldn't it be better to do it like this? They've been there uh, for a while. They know what they're doing. Now, if you do see something, you know, like if you see that a uh, angle is wrong or a image receptor is out of position, then there are diplomatic ways to say something. Never in front of the patient, though. Don't start asking questions in front of the patient. Wait until you're around the corner and then say, hey, you know, um, are you sure there's enough angle? Or, you know, you're sure that film was pushed down? I thought maybe that film from my side, it looked like it was not correctly positioned. Um, be diplomatic though. Uh, you know, don't just tell people, you're wrong. That won't work too well. Um, and, and when you're at clinic, okay, don't get too comfortable. Okay, if you're kicking back in the break room with your feet up on the table and there's patience to be done, um, that's not gonna look good for you. You definitely want to be out there. Uh, whenever there are, whenever there's anything going on in the department, you want to try to get right in the middle of it, if at all possible. Okay, and, sorry, just going to make a little minor adjustment here. Okay, something else. Professionalism, professional appearance. We have a dress code for a reason. You can't wear like great big old hoop earrings. A, it doesn't look professional, and B, psychotic patient or a patient that's drunk or something like that, they can grab a hold of that hoop earring of yours and yank it right out of your ear. And I've known that to happen. Um, sometimes patients can be very combative, especially if uh, you know they're getting brought in by the police or if they're in an altered state of consciousness. They don't know where they are or what's going on. Um, and sometimes they're just scared. So dress code. Make sure your appearance is neat. You know, your hair, if you have like crazy hair, put on a surgical cap or something like that. Don't wear any crazy jewelry. Don't stick a big piercing through your nose. Um, you know, you need, to, you need to look sharp. You need to look professional. Clean uniforms. Another thing, be on time. This is so important, not only as a student, but also as a working technologist. If I've been overnight and it's time for me to go home, 
I can't leave until my relief gets there. So I don't want to hear any baloney and cheese about how your alarm didn't go off or your car wouldn't crank or any of that stuff because it's 7 o'clock in the morning. I want to go home. I need to get some sleep. And if you're not there to relieve me, then I can't leave. I can't go anywhere until you get there. This is why we drill people so hard on punctuality. Be on time as a student. Build up that habit. Show up to work 15, 20 minutes early all the time so that when 7 or 8 o'clock rolls around and it's time to start clinic, you know, you've already had your cup of coffee, gossiped with everybody, you know, caught up with what's going on after the weekend, and so when the time rolls up, you can just go to work. Initiative. Initiative is part of professionalism. It's also very important. If there's work to be done, jump on it. Get in there. Um, and if you're not 100% comfortable about doing it by yourself, talk to your technologist and say, hey, there's somebody here for an abdomen x-ray. Can I get them and bring them into room seven and do it in there? Um, and they'll say, yeah, you know, go get the patient and I will watch you. And, and if you need any help, I'm right here with you. Um, at first, you're going to need a lot of help. But then as you become more and more experienced, then you're going to do more and more things on your own. And that's great. Um, positive attitude. You know, always, uh, even if you're not necessarily having the greatest day, we don't want our patients to know that. And so we're going to, you know, maybe, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hey there. Yeah, yeah, my name's John. Come on in. Um, okay, so always enthusiastic, positive, treat every patient like they're your first patient of the day. You know, um, you're going you're gonna to be uh, welcoming, you're going to have a smile on your face, make them feel like that you know what you're doing, um, and help them to have a little bit better day. Some of these people are pretty miserable. Um, okay, I know some people were born miserable, but I mean some of our patients are really hurting, and they might have just got a diagnosis that is not good news. And so, um, yeah, try it. Try to be positive, try to put on a good face, and um, you know, help people feel a little bit better. Um, and last thing on professionalism that I wanted to mention is taking some pride in your work. Okay, when you take an image, if it's not, okay, if it's not a textbook image that could go in Bontrager, that happens. You know what I mean? Where not every image is going to be beautiful, but does it show the doctor everything they need to see? Yes. Um, if it doesn't, then we might have to go back and repeat it. Um, maybe you've got two images. One shows the top of the lungs better and one demonstrates the bottom of the lungs better. Maybe you pass both images. You know, that's totally, um, totally permissible. But take some pride in your work. Take some pride in what you do. Um, every single x-ray is not going to be a masterpiece, but some of them will be. And especially after you start building up some skills, then you're going to wind up taking some images that could go into a textbook. You know, they're going to be perfectly lateral. You know, those condyles are going to be lined up right on top of each other. They're going to be gorgeous. Um, you know, and when that happens, I always, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, look at this. This should have gone in a textbook. Um, patient care. Um, okay, some of our patients, uh, I've heard people say, you know, you've got to have respect for everybody. Well, that's not really all that possible. You don't necessarily have to have respect for all people, but you do have to treat all people with courtesy. Um, you know, you, you don't, uh, you're, don't be mean to people just because they're mean to you. You know, don't be rough with your patients, you know, just because they're being uncooperative or whatever. It's human nature, you know, to try to give what we get. You know, so if somebody gives you attitude, your instant response is to just give it back to them. Don't be doing that. We want to be courteous with all our patients. You know, if it's because a lot of the people that come to the hospital, um, literally the other night there was a guy that came in. He was found laying beside the road. Nobody knew who the heck he was or anything. And, you know, he's really out of it. Uh, you know, and you can kind of tell he's been laying around for a while because he's really dirty. Um, but we still treat people like that with the utmost of courtesy. Um, always, always be good to people. Um, now, don't overexpose your patients. 
the temptation's going to be high to use like high KVP or I'm sorry, high mass techniques because um, you know you don't want to have to repeat an image because it was underexposed. So the temptation is to overexpose. Try not to do that, and also shield your patients whenever possible. Um, I try my best. When I've got a patient, I try to put a lap shield on them, put a thyroid shield on them. If it's a lady, shield their breast tissue. Um, there's things you can do to try to help uh, minimize your patient's radiation exposure. Now, okay, so we've talked about taking care of our patients. Now a little bit about taking care of you. Take care of yourself. Okay, a lot of people that wind up getting sick, the reason they got sick, well some people are just genetically more susceptible. But some people don't take a bath regularly, some people don't eat right, they don't drink enough water, they don't get enough sleep. Their body is already compromised, and then if some disease comes along, they catch it. So as a healthcare worker, you can save yourself a lot of grief if you bathe every day, take a good bath, you know, clean out all the cracks and crevices, wash your hair, keep your feet really clean. Your feet are important in this job. You're going to be on your feet for 12 or more hours a shift sometimes. So uh, good shoes, good um, foot care, that's very, very important. Um, yes, nutrition. Drink lots of water. Keep yourself hydrated. Get sleep. Don't stay up all night playing video games or whatever. You know, when you get a chance to sleep, take it. You know, because the next day you might have to work a long shift. Um, radiation safety. Wear your apron whenever possible, especially in the OR and fluoro, you're going you're gonna to always be wearing an apron. But if you do a lot of portable x-rays where you're just like really close to the patient during the exposure, put on an apron for that too. Um, it's a good habit to get into. And if you do work in the OR or if you do do a lot of fluoro, get yourself some goggles, some um, glasses that are lead, um, uh, that have like a lead protection equivalent. Uh, wear those. Take it from me. I had to have cataract surgery at an early age and I'm 99% sure that the reason why my eyes got cataracts was because I spent so much time in um, I spent time in interventional, I spent time in the OR, a lot of time in the OR, and I spent a lot of time in CT. So I got exposed to a load of radiation, and I think that that was what caused my um, eyes to cloud up. So, um, let's see, what else did I have? Oh yeah, don't forget your shoes. Wipe down your shoes with uh, germicidal wipes every chance you get, and maybe when you get home, um, you can either, you can have an extra pair of shoes that you leave at the hospital or you can just leave your shoes outside or leave them on the back porch or something like that. You might not necessarily want to track whatever you're bringing from the health care facility into your own house. And when you get home, you know, throw your dirty clothes in the dirty clothes. Uh, go ahead and take a shower is my advice. You know, shower and shampoo your hair before you get in bed. Um, just, just being safe. Um, if I could do it, anybody can do it. I came through the program. Um, I didn't have any prior knowledge of anything medical. I never even had an anatomy class. I hadn't had a biology since the 10th grade. Um, but they trained me. They showed me how to take x-rays. They showed me all about uh, the, the imaging of the various body parts, the human anatomy that was going to be demonstrated, how the human anatomy functioned. I learned it all and I got really good at it and you know so whenever I graduated they had me come back and start teaching and I've been working in the profession like I said now for well I was in school for two years but then I've been out for 19 years and I've never really stopped studying I just really enjoy x-ray technology you will too you can totally do this and you know so find you a program go ahead and apply you know, even if you think you might not have all the prerequisites or whatever, go ahead and apply. Um, if, you, if you don't have everything you need to get in, they will let you know that. They'll help you. You know, but, you know, somebody's got to be the student, so why not you? You can do this. And then you can join me in the profession of radiologic technologist. All right, thanks very much. Good luck with everything. If you decide to get into an x-ray program, I know you're going to do fantastic. 
All right, so take care. Uh, good luck with everything. And if you ever wind up working at the hospital with me, um, you know, just say, hey, you know, I saw you on a video and now here I am. And yeah, come on. We're going to go take some x-rays. We're going to have a good time doing it. All right, so take care. Um, and x-ray ed is out. I'll be talking to you all later. All right, bye.